Alrighty, uh, I'm Fade. This is going to be a pretty quick Pangar tutorial. There's going to be a timestamp in the description that goes to around the second half of the Hellion tutorial, because all that stuff also applies to Pangar. And I feel like it's just a waste of time to make a video twice as long as it needs to be when I can just put a timestamp link. So if you've already seen the entire Hellion video, then the stuff that is different in Pangar is that it doesn't matter whether or not you cut off his tail. You want to break off his elemental scales because his Aether mode does not drop buffs, and it's kind of annoying. And his Enrage is just an animation. It's not like stomping or anything. Now that I've finished that stuff, I'm going to go over a quick movement that you should learn before you try fighting Pangar with a sword specifically. And it's actually very helpful to be able to do this if you're going to do Pengar. And again, like this video is assuming you're just trying to get the kill. It's not about break part farming. It's about your progression, your quest completion, that kind of thing. So if you hold W, press space bar, and left or right click with a sword, you get that. And if you switch keys in the middle of it, so, you know, to A, D, or S, you change directions. You know, and you can also do it just backwards, blah, blah, blah. And this works with a controller too, obviously. The other way that you can do it is just to hold W and turn your mouse and then left or right click. And so now that you can, you know, turn, you notice that your character actually changes directions. He starts forward and goes some other way. And you can also do that by holding W to begin with, like I said, and then switch keys. And this is going to be important later on. It's how you knock him over while he's rolling from underneath him. Like while you're DPSing, he'll start a roll and you can knock him over. You don't have to wait for him to come at you. As far as gear is concerned, um, I guess I'll just go over a quick, like what kind of cells you usually want in your armor. Don't do this. I did it as a joke because you get so many elemental resistant cells that there's nothing else to do with them but any like tier 4 gear or maxed out tier 3 gear is fine in here you are going to take a bit of extra damage or do a little bit less damage if you're using the wrong element but it's not a huge deal um if you are kind of curious about what cells to put in your stuff i'd say something like this like my shroud set just the tenacious cells if you're using a sword, you don't need these. And you can use something else, like movement speed. But I would say pretty much any other weapon you would want them. Maybe not pike, you could probably do movement speed with a pike. And if you're using a pike, you can use a different chest cell, like uh, the invasion and vulnerability one. I believe is what it's called. Now, as far as weapons are concerned, there's a sword cell that's somewhat helpful in here, forceful detonation. You don't need it. I'm not making this video to be dependent on any specific weapon cells because I feel like that's kind of a dick move, especially if people are trying to do this and don't have them. But I will explain how those cells would be used. Um, hammers can boop him while he rolls at you, so that's pretty helpful. Axes are pretty much just DPS in here. Swords. Uh, I'll go over more in depth how to use that movement later, but they're pretty nice, and if you do have that cell, you can use them just like a hammer. Chain blades, there's a booping cell called weighted blades. I have one, it's just not on any of my chain blades at the moment, because I don't believe in using boop cells, personally. I feel like if you just learn how to do it without them, you're going to be better off in the long run. And then pikes can boop with their Q. So they're pretty much on par with hammers. One note for hammers is their right click normally has a delay on the shot. But if you do a roll attack and then right click, like I've been showing with the sword, so this, there's no delay. It shoots right away, which means that it's a little bit easier to time your boop against a pangar specifically with a hammer if you're using a dodge roll to like go into your boop. Now, simple health potions are fine. And at this point, I'm going to show off a strategy for three or four players to work together 
and trivialize the entire fight out of existence. Like, it won't matter anymore. So once I show this, if you already have a group of friends ready to kill a Pangar, go for it. You don't even need to finish the video if you don't want to. Notice that little movement that he did before he rolled at me. That right there. He's going to do that before every single roll. And he has two other attacks. This is his tail slam. He kind of jiggles back and forth. The roll is, you know, he kind of rears up all the way back, like his head goes back and all that kind of stuff. And then he's got a shoulder charge also. And once you learn those three tells, you can, you know, decide what he's going to do and react accordingly before he does it. If you have a group of players, so pretend I've got like, you know, three guys running behind me right now. You stay together. And if he's going to tail slam or shoulder charge, you avoid it. If he's going to roll, you all hold your ground and try to interrupt that roll by booping it with, you know, there's the shoulder charge, by the way. With um, your hammers, your pikes, whatever you have. And that's it. You just keep doing what I'm doing here. You just, you basically just run around. And when you get to the right distance, you wait. Oh, he's going to roll. All right, you should boop him right there. If he goes into aether mode, which he will do eventually, uh, you're just going to be rolling through him. And that's how you should always deal with aether mode, no matter if you're in a group or not. Because he's, as long as you're going through him, the Aether Mode will have zero impact on your gameplay. If you try to go around or sideways, you will get screwed over. Don't do that. Um, but yeah, that's really it. You just you stay at about this distance right here. You can stand still once you're at this point, and you just get your boop in, and you're good to go. The boop window itself is about one second after he starts the roll through about one second before the roll ends so you can't do it right away and you can't do it you know right as he's about to kind of slide like that you have to get it somewhere in the middle and that's that's the four-man strategy you just keep running and keep baiting it and boop him and eventually you'll learn when you're at the right distance you stand still and wait and boop and then damage and then run so as for booping him, as you saw there, it's not super easy with just a left click on any weapon. You really, it's not going to go well for you if you try to do that. You can show off if you want, if you're really confident that you're going to win the fight anyways, but you know, if you were, you wouldn't be here. So the way that you actually want to fight him, and that is a boot, by the way, I wanted to kind of show what he does when he falls over without doing it from underneath. Um. If you are, you know, fighting normally by yourself or in a group, you're going to DPS him just like you would DPS a Hellion. And you're going to use that movement that I showed earlier, which I just did, to boop him when he starts to roll. It takes a lot of practice to do this very consistently, but it's the best way to carry a group of players. And if you can learn to do it, fairly consistently, you will kill Pangar pretty much no matter how bad your squad is. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. Eventually. You might take a couple tries, but you'll get there. So I'll do it once or twice more just to kind of demonstrate. And then that's probably going to be the video because, like I said, this guy's really similar to Hellion. If he does one of these attacks, like the other forward attacks while you're under him, just kind of roll with it and avoid the damage. The tail slam, you don't even have to um, move. It'll just go right over your head as long as you're underneath. Alrighty, so I'm hoping that's enough footage for you guys to kind of watch and See how I reacted from a couple different positions. Good luck on this guy. He's honestly a pain. I thought he was the hardest fight in the game, you know, bar none, for quite a while until I started to get the hang of this. But good luck. Yeah, and um, hopefully you get it.